Coming up today, we're chatting with Beans on Toast ahead of his gig with William Crichton tomorrow night. And we was all united under Randy Travis. And uh, we kept on, we keep on threatening to uh, do it on this tour, but we haven't so far, but we're planning to learn it tonight and, and do it first time <laughs> at the junkyard in Maitland. Darren will tell you about how to get tickets to see School of Rock the Musical. And I'll tell you about the Renos at the Beaches Hotel. Produced on Awabakal and Warramai land, this is the good stuff powered by BYD on Newcastle Live. This is good. <laughs> Good stuff. The good stuff. The Beach Hotel in Merriweather has reopened its doors after closing for renovations. The reopening also coincides with the launch of a new top floor dining venue called Peregrine, which officially opens this month. The stacks on the menu and live music has already returned. To find out more, head on over to newcastlelive.com.au. Newcastle Live. Newcastle Live. UK Muso Beans on Toast has returned to Australia for a tour that stops in at the junkyard tomorrow night. We caught up with Beano for a chat prior to the gig. I want to start off by asking you about why you like coming to Australia because obviously you know you were here last time or this time last year and you've come back so it must be good so what was your experience like last time last this is my third trip yeah. so the first time I've come out I mean most of my my gateway to Australia has definitely been William Crichton you know we sat in his garden in his outside his studio at the moment uh, and we met at a UK festival and became kind of friends pretty quickly and kind of off the and it was just an opportunity from that you know he was like have you ever played in australia i'd always wanted to get out here and like i always sort of felt that musically it sit quite well i mean when it comes to taking my my music abroad it's so language based it's so wordy that i do tour germany and like you know and sort of you know around Europe, but it's like, to me, it always feels like English speaking first language is gonna be where my music makes the most sense, basically. So yeah. uh, um, Australia and America are the, the sort of obvious places to, to tour it. And I, but I just, the opportunity didn't arise, you know, until, you know, I was on my 11th, 12th album or whatever, when I, when I first met up with William. And he was just like, yeah, there's just the opportunity was there. He was like, do you wanna come out and do some shows? And I kind of extended a similar offer in the UK and with that you know we've become dear friends now our families are all friends so it's like I mean I'm very much I'm, from the get-go of doing Beans on Toast it's been very much a kind of like say yes you yeah. know <laughs> especially to interesting opportunities and that can thrive into beautiful things and you know and it, it, what a, you know what a way to see another country as mm. well straight I mean we're all like we're not even playing. When I put my first Australian tour poster up, everyone was like, I've lived in Australia my whole life and never heard of these places. You know, because yeah. we was going, we were, last time I went to Grenfell, last night mm -hmm. we was on uh, Dangar Island, and st places that, so it's not even the obvious touring route of Australia. It's going to really see some, uh, um, some interesting places and meet some wonderful people, which is, you know, touring all over, you get that. But the opportunity yeah. is here. I've got a... I like the people, I like the culture, you know, I like the vibe. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about Dengar Island? Because we were just talking about it and it's a bit of a hidden gem. Yeah, I don't want to be, as I was saying, I don't know whether you're supposed to tell everyone about it. It's, but it's, what, is it 40 minutes drive from Sydney? Maybe even yeah. less, maybe like yeah. 20 minutes. So it's just, out, it's just north of Sydney and you have to get a boat there and there's an island with the 300 people live on there seems to be most of them are kind of you know musicians or artists or whatever and they've all there's there's no cars mm -hmm. it's just that i mean last year after the gig when we played last year we were sort of hanging out and i was I, there was a bunch of us it was late everybody went to the beach i was the only one that walked into the sea and that phosphorescent you know where the, the oh, like the yeah thing, it was so beautiful i mean it was up there with one of my top ever sort of experiences in mm. nature i mean so i started kicking i was like oh my god i didn't know that you couldn't see it unless you was above it so i'm starting going it's so beautiful everybody look. and everybody just thought i'd lost the plot and they couldn't see the all the yeah, glitter right. like, they didn't know i was in the middle of a disney movie <laughs> so i dragged them all in and then everybody agreed and it was yeah it was you know it's one of them things that you normally see in a film or yeah, something like that yeah. you know and i was out there living it <laughs> So experiences like that, you know, a second to none. Mm. I'd love to know the Toothpaste and the Tube, it's your latest album. From what I heard, 
Were there any influences or inspiration from your time here in Australia or am I reading it wrong? Um, nothing directly, really. No. I was actually, but I definitely, uh, right here in the garden, actually, I was sort of putting some finishing touches on mm. some of those songs. They, it, Australia was the first time I played a bunch of them live because I'd sort of written, I'd written half the album this time last year. And uh, and again, I was playing to a lot of the times, especially in the when we was in places like Grenfell at the Cordial Factory and whatnot. I was definitely playing to a crowd that had not heard my music at all. So yeah. it didn't matter whether the song was brand new or or five mm. or you know or a hit of the past. So it was. I I definitely refined some of the songs and then they got the way I generally see it with a song is it kind of it's not really born into the world until you played it in front of mm. people so in that respect a lot of the songs were kind of were sort of born here yeah. but i don't know whether not so much the kind of the writing yeah about it yeah beautiful do you have any special things up your sleeve for the gig at the grand junkyard uh yeah i mean i'd like to think that i've always got something up my sleeve for each gig but i couldn't tell you what it was until <laughs> until the night but i'm certainly looking looking forward to going back met some incredible people there last time and is that where it's like uh robert johnson yes on the, exactly. Uh, exactly and actually uh, we will have something up i'll say because for this whole tour me and william have been threatening to sing a randy travis song um which goes back to last year at dangar which finished in this sort of wonderful the guy steve who puts on the shows we was all we was all there hanging out at his house sitting around a table to like trading songs you know like passing the guitar around which is something that when I started doing this, I would sort of imagine that that was going to happen a lot more than it does. And it's the sort of, for me, it's like the perfect end for a night. Loads of people who love songwriting, passing the guitar around. It's a really, really memorable night. And that, we was all like, so it was me, William, uh, Nate from the Dead South, Jules, it was a bunch of us. And we, none of us, we didn't have one sort of, we was mostly playing our own songs. But we, we couldn't find one. Everybody kept on trying to cover, thinking someone's all going to sing all the words. Yeah, yeah. But we couldn't find a song that we all united on. And then I think it was Jules started playing a Randy Travis song. And he's like a, 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 a he was massive in the 80s, but he was a kind of ch really cheesy 80s country singer. Mm. And I, you know, he was mine and my dad's favourite artist for a long time. And I like some words you just don't forget. And it started, they started singing. And it turns out that that was the song. That we all knew was wow. this Randy Trapp. And then we all, we sung like four or five Randy Trapp. And we was like, because we we had, you know, there was a Canadian, an English and uh, two English people, three Australians. And we was all united under Randy Travis. And uh, we kept on, we keep on threatening to uh, do it on this tour. But we haven't so far, but we're planning to learn it tonight and, and do it first time. <laughs> at the junkyard in Maitland. Amazing. So, there we go. <laughs> Do you think there'll ever be an official collab um, between yourself and Crido, like recorded? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'd like to think I'll come back here to the studio to make a record mm. at some point. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's all, it's, it's, the visits are always quite fleeting. Well, not, they're not fleeting, but there's not much time to do any, you know, their tours. Yeah. We come over to tour. And as much as I have laid around in bed doing absolutely nothing all day today i guess we could have but you know uh william had stuff to uh, you know he's got house house art stuff to be getting on with but yeah i mean let's start with the randy travis collab and, and go from there yeah brilliant thank you so much for spending some time with us my pleasure <laughs> this is work so good uh, good stuff Hunter Drama will bring School of Rock the Musical to the Civic Theatre this July. Featuring a talented ensemble of young stars, the musical is based on the legendary movie School of Rock. Duh. The show will take over the Civic Theatre from the 18th to the 20th of July this year and early bird tickets are on sale now. Hit the website newcastlelive.com.au to find out more. Uh, good stuff. That's it for the good stuff today. I'd love to say a big thank you to Beans on Toast for joining us for a chat. We'll see you at the gig and catch you from 4pm tomorrow for more of the good stuff.